Alrighty there you lot, now here is the situation we've got. I'm just here happily and merrily away um, just having a little look into this Traxxas Revo thing to try and find out what the trouble is with it. And then I get a text message from the bloke who owns this. And he's, what he's done is he's copy and pasted me a message from the person he bought this from. It's quite a long message. Um, because, let me tell you the, the crack what what it is. The minute that that uh, seized up, I don't know what happened. Um, the minute it jammed, you know, it could be a gear in here that's jammed. It could be anything. I didn't take anything apart. I just sent the bloke who owns it a text message and says, Look, I got it to run. It ran really poorly and really rough. And now something's jammed up. Whether it's the engine seized or jammed or whether it's a starter. I don't know. Something's jammed. You because know, I don't want to start taking someone else's car apart. You know, because the idea is he's not paying me to do any of this. I just offered, I said, because he don't have a clue. He has no clue how to start it up. He has no clue about anything. Um, he said he tried to start it, but it wouldn't start. So I, And we was trying there, and you can't really do too much. So I said, look, mate, if you trust me, I don't never, I mean, know him a little bit, you know. I said, if you trust me, I'll give you my telephone number. I'll take it home tonight, and, and I'll start it up for you. Make, you know, get it running so we know that it does run and then I'll bring it back and I'll show you how to do it that was the original plan yeah just take it home that night start it up to that night and then bring it back the next morning but because it wouldn't start properly and it wouldn't run very well I sent him a text message and it says look I've got it running it's not very good I can bring it back tonight but but you ain't got a clue have you so it's not going to be much use to you if you want, I can have a play with it when I get a bit more time, in a couple of nights' time. And I can get it to tune a bit better, and then I can give it back and it'll be running. That was the plan. And then when, But when I was trying to start it up and it jammed up, and you lot saw that, and that's when I sent in the message and said, look, I'm trying to get it to run better for you, but it's jammed up, blah, blah, blah. He said, all right. What did he say? Leave it with me or something like that. Anyway, a couple of days passed. And then, you know, it was on. it was here so uh, I just decided I didn't want to take too much apart but I decided that I wanted to try and determine whether it's the engine what's seized up or if it's a gear in here or something that's jammed up so I've just loosened the screws to move it out the way so that I can get this motor to spin on its own without turning the engine over and also that will free the engine up from being on here I have determined that the engine is the culprit the engine is jammed this turns on its own no problem all the gears in here all turn no problem um, but I can't turn the engine over by the flywheel or anything so there's something in the engine that's jammed up the glow plugs not in there so no it's not that it's not flooded anyway that's as far as I've got and it's as far as I'm gonna go I just wanted to determine that for myself really I mean it's only a few screws I can do them back up no problem but he sent me a text message with a copied and paste message. He's been he's been on to the bloke that he bought this from off of Facebook, by the way. Now, in my opinion, if you go and buy something off of Facebook and you give them cash and all that, it's kind of a risk, you know. You don't generally just turn up or go back to the bloke and go look. And it, pardon me, unless it's something really serious, like he's completely scammed you. Then yeah, if he's a proper complete scam. But as far as this goes, you know, he got himself a fully complete truck with the transmitter and everything. There's nothing really wrong with it. And as far as I know, the story was that it had sat on a shelf for two years, not being used for two years or something like that. Uh, so it's kind of like a gamble, isn't it? It's a risk, man. You go and buy it and it might work fine or it might have problems. I mean, if it has problems, it's just one of them things. When you, it's, that's, that's my opinion, you know. When I go and buy something off of... I don't have Facebook, so I don't buy anything off Facebook because I don't have it, full stop. But if I go and buy something from eBay or anything like, anything like that, as long as I'm not scammed, like, I mean, as long as... If I bought this, as long as I got what I bought, which would be a Traxxas Nitro truck, you know, fully complete, which it is, that's fine. If the engine happens to have problems... Oh, it's one of them risks and gambles that you take, you know. Uh, so, but he sent me a copied and paste message from the seller 
saying uh, the person who owns this, what he's done, I think he's told them that he's given the car to a, a nitro shop, yeah, to look over and fix. And they've come back to him and said about the problems. Well, I'm not a shop. He's not paying me to do this work, so I just offered to help, you know. 17 years in RC cars, I've got a little bit of knowledge. Not a lot, but I've got a little bit. And, uh, you know, I can fix anything on here. But we didn't think that I was going to have to fix anything. But he's told them that he's taken it to a shop, okay? And the shop have told him. He has given the actual shop name, and I know what it is, but I'm not going to say it to you lot, because I don't know who the hell's going to be watching this, you know. Um, and he's told the seller that the shop have told him that he has scammed him, if that makes any sense, you know. And then he's come back and he said, I don't trust that, that shop that you've taken the car to. They, they've, they've ran it on full throttle and all that. Uh, what did he say? They've run it on full throttle with no load on and seized it up. They're not a good shop and all that. It's all getting a bit of a mess, you know. I think and what I'm going to have to do there, my friends, is put this back together and give it back to him and say, you're in it on your own because I ain't involved, you know. All I wanted to do was try and help. And now what he's done is he's lied to the bloke who sold it, telling him that I'm a shop. I'm not. I don't know what's going on. So, yeah, I think I'm going to bolt it back up and give it back to him and say, look, fuck off. You're on your own. You fucking, uh, you know. I didn't think he was going to go back to the cellar and start making a load of crap up. Do you know what I mean? I thought Pff. he'd give the T Max back that had problem with the gearbox, and that did. Uh, the bloke said to him, apparently the bloke said to him, all it needs is the engine to be tuned. But it did have a problem with the gearbox. I think because on that T-Max, it has forward and reverse. And a lot of the time on some of them, if you put it in the middle switch, uh, it'll, put it in like an, it'll put it in neutral in between forward and reverse. That might be stuck in there. It might have been stuck between forward and reverse. I don't know. We didn't look into it. All I know is that... Um, all I know is the clutch engaged and that spun the spur gear but the spur gear didn't seem nothing happened in the gearbox and it didn't drive okay so the spur gear ran spun but there was no resistance in the box yeah it just spun on its own so there's something in the box that was a problem uh, like I said it could have been something simple it could just be stuck in between reverse and Full, reverse and forward I don't know we didn't look into it but he gave that back to the bloke and the bloke gave him his money back very simple but yeah it's a bit of a mess to tell you the truth uh, yeah I don't know if I really want to be stuck in the middle of it he's foreign and all that's nothing against foreign people I mean honestly nothing against foreign people I, I, plenty of foreign people are fine no problem but they seem to want I don't know oh, I don't know I think you paid 130 quid for this you know, the, the, the bloke, like, I felt sorry for him to start with, but now he's making all this shit up and put, getting me stuck in the middle, I just feel like saying, no, see you later, you know, teach me a lesson to stop helping people, that's what it'll do, but there you go. So, the crack is with this, that I've determined that the engine is the trouble, it is jammed, something seized, from my, from my, from my personal experience, right, um, the way that that was running when it did run suggests to me that it's a bearing that's given way. Probably the bottom end bearing, okay? It ran in the same way as my Rush did, the T15, when the bottom end bearing gave way. And then when that seized up and jammed up, it's done, it did exactly the same as what this done. So that's what I think has happened. I think that's happened. Um, and a lot of you lot from the other two videos that come up, you were telling me that this particular engine, the 3.3, was a pretty bad engine anyway. So I don't know. Uh, yeah, but I'm certainly not going to be taking it apart unless uh, unless he tells me to. But I've told him to stop hassling that seller. Leave him alone, I said. You know, you bought this at a gamble. It's nothing to do with the seller anymore. You know, he give you the money back for the other one. So leave it alone and just sort this one out a new engine for this is 197 quid I looked it up on the internet you might better get them cheaper in other places but I just had a quick search on the internet and 197 quid for one of these brand new engines so that's without all this easy start thing on it as well just an engine that's had a pull start actually so yeah that's the crack with this so far it's quite late at night now 
Oh, it's not late, late, it's half past eight, so. I think what I'm gonna do, uh, I'm gonna bolt these screws back together now that I have determined what I wanted to determine, because I didn't want to say to him, oh, it's seized up, but all that happened was perhaps a gear had come loose or something and jammed something up somehow or whatever. I didn't want to do that, you know, and tell him the engine's no good. So I, I wanted to determine for me and for him that it was the engine or maybe it was this, but I have now determined it is the engine and not this. So that's as far as I'm gonna go. So yeah, uh, yeah, well I'll catch up there, yeah, maybe tomorrow, maybe the next day, whenever I get any more word of what, what is gonna happen with this, that's when you'll, uh, that's when you'll see next. All right, you lot, right. I know I said I weren't gonna delve into it anymore, um, but I still gotta wait for the tumble dry to finish it here, so I can't go indoors yet. So I thought what I'd do is I'd just play with it anyway. And uh, <laughs> so I'll take the engine completely out now. There's the EZ start thing, EZ start, whatever they call it, that thing, right? Here's the engine. Now, that is, it's jammed. It's as simple as that. If I really try, you know, I can make it, it's grinding. That it is, that's grinding. There's, uh, you know, something in there. I've got the tumble dryer in the background, so you ain't gonna about to hear it. But it's grinding. It's failed, simple as that. Fireworks going on out there. So it's proper jammed up there now. And uh, yeah, it's simple. There's, there's a bearing in there that's failed. But in my opinion, right, and I don't care whether it was or whether it weren't, because these things happen. It's as simple as that, you know, stuff breaks. But I think it was like that to start with because. Um, you lot saw how it was when it first started up, didn't you? It ran really rough and it was it was all, all over the place and it was quite tight. That's, that's what happens when you get a bearing go. That's what the 215 engine done when the bearing went. It ran really shit for a while and then all of a sudden it just got tight and it stopped. And that's exactly what this did. So I think it's obvious, you know, I think it was like it when it came. I don't know whether it was sold like it or whether he did that. Yeah, I mean, he might not have told me the full story. He, he told me he couldn't get it to start. But you never know, he could have got it to start. It could have revved the fuck out of it. Um, you know, and that scared him or whatever, I don't know. But I, I honestly don't know. I mean, I'm just the middleman. All I am here to do is to try and find out what the trouble is with it. And I found it. So this needs a new engine either that or this one needs to be rebuilt but I, I, I can't see being able to get parts for this maybe you can maybe you can't but either way the engine has got some trouble and it needs to be addressed that's you know it, it goes that way let me see if I can turn that tumble dryer off for a second listen Go that way. Yeah. You hear that? But you can, can't you? Yeah, that's the jamming point now. I mean, I could take the old engine apart and find out exactly what's happened, what bearing has gone, you know, but it's probably, it's gonna be pretty pointless. And it's not, you know, what I need, what I'm going to do now is bolt it all back together, put the engine back in, and I'm going to tell him it's definitely the engine that's had it. 100%, definitely the engine that's had it. And, uh, yeah, that's going to be that, my friends. All right, here we go, all done up again. Uh, all put back together. All I've got to do is put the glow plug back in, put the copper washer back there. I'm gonna give it back to him exactly how it was when I gave when he gave it to me. Because it sounds like he's a bit of a you know you know a bit of a uh, what's the word? Not complainer but troublemaker. 
bit of a troublemaker, I think, the bloke. Don't know, man. Right, put that back in there. But it 100% needs an engine. Well, I don't know, can you, you might better get bearings and pistons and things for these, but it'd probably be worth just getting a new engine in it. I don't know, 197 quid, or even a second hand engine, man, I don't know. I don't know, but without a doubt, it's regardless, it needs some work doing to the engine. It's the engine that's the trouble. So there you go. That's that. Part three of this, part three or part four? I think this is part three. Part three of the Traxxas Revo. Will it start? It'll start, but not anymore. It did start, but not now. So there you go. Nice truck, really. I mean, these are all right. I don't mind them. I gave them a full tank of bloody fuel. Look. Oh well, let's put the body on it. Let's put the body on it. You see, that's partly the trouble. I mean, I'm not, there's nothing, I'm not, not digging against, like, newcomers. Or people that, that, that are trying to get into the hobby and don't know what they're doing about anything. But that's part of the trouble. Uh, you know, when you buy something second hand like that. Um... Yeah, because he, he spent a lot of money on this. I think this one was 130. Um, I know the other. I know that I know he paid 130 for the old T Max that he gave that he said he gave back to the bloke. And I think he said he paid 130 for this one as well. I'm not entirely sure, but he paid something around there. So, you know, that's a. It's a lot of money to sort of throw away because essentially that's what he's done because he didn't know you know if you're serious if you're serious and you want something to actually work and you care you make sure and you and you have a look first but apparently this was shown running yeah but he wouldn't have known any difference the bloke could have just started it up like I had it started up and you saw me have it started up he could have just started it up like that and said look there it runs lovely turned it off and then the, the chap who bought it was like oh I've seen it run brilliant you know but we we all me and you lot all saw together how uh, badly this ran before it seized up so there was a trouble there anyway oh well that's the way it is so there may be a part four if he turns around to me and says all right you know i want to put a new engine in it what i'll probably end up doing is telling him where to buy the engine he can go and buy the engine and i'll put it in i'll put the engine in yeah, because I don't want all this crap where if I buy the engine for him or whatever, there's no way in absolute hell I'm going to go and buy the engine with my own money, because I can't afford to, and then have him pay me back. No way in absolute hell. And I'm not very comfortable if he gives me the money to go and buy the engine, because then I'm essentially in kind of debt, if you, if you will. Because he, he would have given me £200, to go, he's nah, it's no good. I'm not doing that. I'll tell him where to buy an engine. He can go and buy the engine, and he'll give the engine to me, and I'll fit the engine, and I'll give it back. I'll say fuck off. <laughs> That's enough. I've had enough of this. Nah, it ain't that bad. I'm only joking. No, it's just it's a simple thing, you know. Needs an engine. I'm only messing around you lot, but it does need an engine. It's simple as that. But it's one of these things, you know. What do you do? What do you get yourself into? You know. Second hand parts, second hand things, bits and bobs. So there we go. I'll catch you later on, you lot. Take care, won't you? And uh, just enjoy yourself. And with any luck, we will have a part four of this because I quite enjoy working on it. It's quite a nice truck. See you later, you lot. Take care.